In today's video, I'll be talking about IPOs or initial public offerings. And this is essentially when a company moves from private ownership, only allowing founders or employees to invest in that business to being publicly available for anybody to put their money into it. IPOs can lead to very exciting investment opportunities because they can give you a massive return on your investment. Because you're getting the shares for that company at a heavily discounted price, this draws a lot of attention to them and many people can be very interested and actually being a part of a company's IPO. Throughout the course of this video, I'll be explaining what IPOs are and how to invest into them. Are they something that needs a lot of insider knowledge and technical analysis to actually be a part of? Or can any regular investor be a part of a company's IPO? And is it actually worthwhile participating in an IPO or are you best to wait until the dust settles to get a more accurate understanding if that business is actually worthwhile putting your money into? Because it can be difficult to accurately estimate the value of a company and how viable it will be in terms of a long-term investment for you. So breaking down what is an IPO, essentially before a company becomes publicly available on any form of stock exchange, it first is held in private ownership. As we said in the intro, only founders or employees can put their money into a company. And then once it moves from private ownership, it becomes an IPO. Once a company is in its IPO stage, then institutional investors can put their money into that business. And essentially an institutional investor is just an organization that invests money on other people's behalf. So examples of these are banks or hedge funds, and these can have hundreds of millions of dollars backing them. And therefore IPOs are normally limited to people that have very deep pockets. And typically IPOs happen behind closed doors. Retail investors like you and me, people who invest for themselves from their own savings, typically can never actually be a part of an IPO. This can put retail investors at a disadvantage because they are getting the shares once their price has been inflated and only institutional investors can take advantage of that discounted price from investing in the company's IPO. Then finally, once the IPO is over, then the company will be publicly available to retail investors. Because you can invest in a company at such a discounted price, IPOs can be very appealing and draw a lot of attention. However, they are normally reserved for big institutional investors and make it near impossible for retail investors like you and me to actually be a part of these exciting opportunities. Getting a chance to buy shares of a company at a heavily discounted price, arguably the cheapest price that you can get can be a bit of a drawback and a limitation for the regular retail investors of the world. So this leads me into the question, how do you actually participate in an IPO? Normally the chances were slim to none unless you had very deep pockets. Now thanks to Hatch, which is a New Zealand investing brokerage platform, you can now be a part of an IPO no matter how much money you've got. Thanks to Hatch, IPOs are now available to retail investors, which is a massive step in the right direction and really levels out the playing field. To be a part of the IPOs provided by Hatch, you just have to make your own Hatch account and then you will receive updates on up and coming IPOs and you can make a request to invest into them. One of the most recent IPOs offered by Hatch is Allbirds. The IPO let you invest into this company at a steal of 15 US dollars per share. When it was publicly listed, the value of the shares was 21 US dollars. So as you can see, being a part of the IPO can give you a massive advantage and the price of the Allbird shares went up 90% on the first day. So it can be very exciting stuff if you can get in early and be a part of an IPO opportunity. If you want a complete guide on how to make a Hatch account and using the platform, check this video out on screen to give you a complete step-by-step -step guide on how to use Hatch. In a nutshell, all you really need to make your own Hatch account is a proof of ID, either your driver's license or passport, and then your IRD number, and finally a proof of address, normally just a bank statement or a utilities bill. This information is then processed and it takes about one to two days for it to get verified, and then you'll be nice and ready with your own Hatch account, and top-ups are done through a bank transfer. Navigating Hatch is very easy and straightforward. It's designed for people who have no experience investing in the stock market and it's very beginner friendly so it 
really makes investing very accessible no matter how much experience you have and makes the process of buying shares on the stock market a very straightforward process. If you're interested in making a Hatch account, I'll leave a link down below in the description that will give you $20 when you sign up and deposit your first $100. Once you've got your Hatch account and you see an IPO that you are interested in, you can just make a request for how much you want to invest in that particular IPO. For example, you might request to buy $1,000 worth of shares at that current IPO price. There is a set date where IPO requests will be closed because there is a limited number of IPO shares that are made available. If all the available shares are used up, then the request date for that IPO will be closed early. So just keep that in mind. You'd rather get in early than sit on the fence and wait if you want to be a part of an up and coming IPO. So finally, should you actually invest into an IPO? Overall, it really depends on how much research and understanding you have on that business. If you have done your due diligence and you know how the company works, you are confident in it over the long term, then I would say being a part of the IPO will be a great opportunity for you. If you're thinking of holding that company long term and then the short term ups and downs that typically happen when a company first goes public won't affect you. But if you're just looking to make a quick buck and short sell that business, maybe just a few days after investing into it, then buying an IPO can be a very risky idea. As I said, when a company first becomes public, it's subject to a lot of volatility. The price of that stock can rise rapidly or also drop just as quickly. If you're thinking of the long term, you're getting those shares at the cheapest price possible. So even if there is a sharp drop in price, you're more likely to make a profit or at least break even as opposed to people who are only able to invest once the company actually went public. So it's all about balancing risk versus reward and how much confidence and understanding you have in the business you're putting your money into. Now that you're familiar with IPOs, you might be interested in learning how much money you can make from investing. The video on screen will give you a detailed breakdown of how much money I made in my first year of investing in the stock market. It'll talk about my personal portfolio, what I learned along the way, and how my experiences will change my future investing plans. And a lot of the stuff covered in this video are things I wish I knew earlier. It would have saved me a ton of time and money so make sure to check out this video so you don't make the same mistakes that I did.